Well, initial shots coming in. It's Manish trying to get those early kills as the push keeps coming in from Sprout. It'll be Manish trying to hold it off with a great headshot coming in. It's going to be serious and though on the reply. 4v4, not long lived though as D has in with another great headshot. And this is an excellent start for Aristocracy. The Poles look to do all the damage as D has with a third. There's the quad kill. Beautiful stuff from the pistol from D has. Because now they don't have smokes for the cross. So it makes life a little more difficult for them. Mal's coming in. Nice kill on towards Dennis, who was isolated on the site itself. Smoke goes down for CT. Mal's in with another, looking to deliver these headshots. Pete comes through, and Mal keeps on fragging. Three on the round, but Searson gets the all-important headshot in reply. But my goodness, Aristocracy. Sai currently stand with the deficit. We'll see if they can pull that back, though. It's totally is going to be used... In towards the CT cross, Manise has picked up Keto, and he's coming in with a triple kill. What a hold from Manise as he just gives Aristocracy their best chance of picking up round number 11. Bomb is firmly in the hands of the CT side, and Manise gets another kill down to two health in the process, but he doesn't care. He is on for the ace right now. Always the problem in that position. It's hard to fall back fully. The rotate from Sprout is okay, but Mouse is pushing into the back lines. Aggression not working out for them. Keto landing some great shots, and it's all up to Manise to lock this one down in from upper. No Molotov, no nades, unless you count Whoa. the decoy. It's all about the Glock trying to come through. Well, Manise gets two big kills there in the lineup, and, uh, well, it's gonna be on the board here for aristocracy. Distance Orp is landing shots. Question is, can it turn into a round win? Nice kill from Mouse. Favon trades it out, but he's trapped in the corner. Favon finds the second, and it's into the 1v1. Taz getting the bomb planted. His fragging has been good throughout this series. Can his clutching come through for Aristocracy? He's definitely capable in this sort of scenario. No Searson not able to react quickly enough. Good read from Taz as he takes the round through for Aristocracy. They only come away with the Mahan advantage, but even get to upgrade one of their weapons, which is such a nice start to the round for them. Kalinka's made it even better by finding yet another frag. And Speedak caught off guard by the player under Palace. This is not going according to plan until Forrester finds three kills on the round, bringing it back to the 2v2. He is so low on health, though. A single shot would deal with him, but Forrester finds another headshot. He still needs to do more, though, because the bomb has been dropped just to send Dream Eaters into a pretty poor position economically speaking. So Dracarys could get into this first half still. As they put pressure in towards top banana, it's going to be Sviat with the lineup, three kills. And that's a way to put a stop to Dracarys. Such a strong spray down there. Transfers on runes isn't too bad though. It gives them a real chance to retake this site with the man advantage. So solid work from Flash there to give his team a pretty good position. And wow, Kalinka actually loses out there. I thought he spotted the gun barrel. Problem eventually gets the spray successfully on towards Speedak. And Sviat pushed in towards CT. Is looking to see if he can catch some players off guard. Problem moving in, not looking this way, not looking this way whatsoever. Sviat eventually does the damage necessary. Molotov for the bomb, Flash is on this one right now. He's still on the bomb. Peek comes in and Sviat wins the round for his team. The defuse may have been close, but it doesn't. The smoke. Oh, speed out, trying to get aggressive, but he gets the flash out. Bomb being planted. Crad can't spot that. Looking for this kill, eventually finds it. And Problem is in a real tough position. Gets the first frag, but he's so low on health. He gets the follow-up. Great shot from Problem there. Had to land the headshot. And he does just that for Dracarys. And he is having... Through. There's going to be Forrester just standing in between Gray and Bomb Trent. It's going to be one kill from Flash opening things up, but Forrester's in a good position to trade, and he stays alive. No trade from the T side. In fact, it's going to be a follow-up for Dream Eaters as Speedak connects on towards Shelfie. 
A 3v4 man advantage looking good here on the CT side. And they look really solid at this point. Spam coming through. Bomb hits the deck. Kill from Forrester. Death able to pick up Kinky and tap it away. Eventually, we'll drop Death here on Forrester. It's all on problem with a Deagle. And he's evaded them. He's gone towards upper. And he will finally be spotted by Spidek. But that was quite a bit of death. Very late into this round. 20 seconds. They're going to have to commit. Flush is still using that smoke to his advantage. And he could catch Zywu as he continues to clear. Perfect usage of the enemy smoke. Now Flush is so low, he can't do any more. Eight seconds as the bomb goes down. Crims will arrive from short, just in the nick of timed in support from long. Brolin and JW for the Swedes as they look to try and retake this site. That's precise from oh. the tank. Runs them over. Crims, no HP after his first duel. There's two more where that came from. Just running that clock down. RPK doesn't have to move a muscle, just holding the line. Crims trying to exploit this. First shit's easy for RPK. Four in that round. There we have it. It's a very clean one from Vitality. They still have two players DT. It's all kind of on JW. Golden's locked on long. JW has to do so much, but Flusher actually manages. As they drop, they jump straight into his arms. He's not done. Flusher massacring the French. In round eight, it's a necessary oh. round, even with the USP. Bomb dropped as well. This round is all flusher. Four frags, there's only one man left. Shocks. He won't even have a chance to get to the bomb, given the where it's dropped. Yeah, that's an absolute nightmare. Khan be in a worse position here for Shocks as he'll pick up the AWP and try and find any frags he can, but his time is very limited. Jumps over, takes the bullet to the head, and now at this stage, he'll get no money for the next round. That's big as flusher mows four of them down from the CD spawn position. Ideally, you only want to be dropping a couple down there. I'm not even sure how he managed to get four. So it's a couple going down, so that's fine. But then he swings around again. They're still trying to find that frag in return. Gets the USP out. Finishes things off with Zywoo. And it's going to be a very nice round there. As we get into round number nine. Money broken this time for Vitality. A chance for Fnatic to sink their teeth and draw. But caught off. Brolan. Previously, it was Crims who could keep them at bay on B. But now, as he falls, there's a second in charge. Brolan taking charge. RPK burning, as is Zaiwu, paying a heavy price for their aggression here. Three members of the French squad feeling the pain, and actually that nade can do a whole lot of damage. That flash is good. And now a couple oh, of yeah. frags, it's Zaiwu finds a way into the round for Vitality. Flusher, though, if he gets this timing right, wins the duel on the rifle. There's another tucked into the corner. He may not be both of the remaining Swedes. He's going to try and find one, and does so all onto one man. But the retrieval mission is complete. JW, he scooped it up, and now he's off to the other side of the map. Yeah. This is a great call from JW. He can go for a long, advantageous plan if he wants to. Unfortunately, he has the Glock. Uh, if he had the USP at this stage, that would be fantastic. RPK not buying it at all. He'll stay towards B. That's going to cost him some time. Can he recover a kit? He absolutely can. 79 HP, pretty equal in that department. And JW holding it towards the short position. That's exactly where RPK is coming. Jumps up and towards Xbox. He's going to have to make some noise here. Has no idea as to where JW is positioned. And he hits it. Great stuff from RPK. What a fantastic showing he's had so far in Dust 2. I thought with the overcommitment to the B play, I mean, he had to. He had to stand his ground. B7, four players towards the B tunnels right now. It's Apex to defend with the FAMAS, joined by Shox. He's got the M4, but they've got a distinct lack of utility on this CT side. It's all about the bait and switch towards the corner. Shox behind the barrels, trying to take the aggro initially. But surely a smoke will be in front of these tunnels. Then the flashbang will come through. Apex needs to be very aware of the potential flashes. It's a common pre-file on the T side. Will he be overlooked? I always get the info. Just the shoulder of Golden spotted elsewhere. But that's not where the brunt of this assault is coming from. Back turn and a big spray coming in from Shocks. But he can't convert. Apex can though. Double with his FAMAS. And he has to pick up the pieces. JW would have to ace clutch to pick this round back up. Second round force falling flat for Fnatic. Then you've got one smoke here for the cross. Really not ideal. Oh, and look at Zaiwu's angle. It's primed to get that information relatively safely. Smoke's arrived. Still has the gap to exploit and still connecting bullets. Golden onto the site. Flusher two, but he's been ripped out of the round. It's all on oh. BK! Three quick frags! Stunning work, and that's not the first time. Multi kills, it feels like it's just a guarantee when RPK's in the server today. Yeah. Everything there, bomb planted safely, detects Shoxi on the other side of that smoke, takes him down, doesn't get the initial kill there, but does manage to get the low HP RPK. No problem whatsoever. Really good shot though from Vitality with their armored pistols. The wall bang at the half wall as well, that's pretty ridiculous. 
Well, there we have it. Two rounds in a row. On their feet now. Money's okay. Apex of $8,000 is actually very good. Decent HE grenade will do a boatload of damage as JW's down to 49. So I will, though, feeling the heat. Did he spot the barrel? It doesn't matter. Golden. He'll get him first. Spams him through the wall, looking for a second here, and he delivers. What a fantastic tournament he's had so far. We'll go down to the flames. It buys Shoxi a little bit of time here. No smoke towards spawn suggests they're not committing. Final play going to be. It's going to be an A-side finish. Apex with the bomb. Brolan alone for now. JW desperately trying to scramble back to the side. It's a great smoke from the young star. He'll sit towards the apartments now. It looks like he's done enough to buy some time at least. JW isolated there with the AWP. Oh my Just god. Oh my That's god. That's all the bomb's gone down. Eight seconds remaining. Is there enough time to get this planted? It's absolute chaos here, but Alex will confirm things. Three versus one, it comes down to round number 30. As to whether Vitality can complete the comeback of dreams. Good connection so far. 15 seconds, Vitality, they have to find an answer soon. Zaiwu is the answer. Only one onto Golden though. Through the smoke Ow. onto Flushy with eight seconds left they can plant. It's him that has to do it all. Two frags, now the bomb planted and they've got a chance. JW, great connection before he can tuck himself into his hidey hole, but Shox and RPK, it's all on their shoulders. No secret where Shox is, and RPK with low HP looking to apply pressure. It's Crimson JW to ensure it. And Fnatic, it took them seven rounds, if you include regulation, to find the CT round that was eluding them, but it's in overtime. And it's a start. MR3. Yeah. And that's the first. Well, Ben, it was the opening bit from Golden, and then the full BX. Is this really how it works? Amazing. They, they took that hook, line, and sinker. They full on sold it with just steps. Yeah. And now Zywu shocks an apex to retake Fnatic. Three frags away. Every second the bomb ticks. It's a step closer to Mirage. JW, that's a leap in the right direction. Three frags JW. A stunning triple. And they're off to Mirage. I know. It was Zywu. Finding the opening kills, and they actually had a five versus three, but out of nowhere, RPK missing that shot. Opened wow. the door of opportunity, and Flush has slams it in their face. RPK responsible for B, Alex A. The latter that we will see tested now. Admittedly, Flusher is low. He's likely going to probably use that Molotov to... I was going to say Flush out, but not intended. Instead, he just walks in. Get another one from Alex. He's on for the ace. Single-handedly winning the round in Flash and Alex. <laughs> incredible performance in the final map of a grand final. Yeah, the crowd goes mild with that one. Turns to favor still. Three versus three. Recovered rifle does nothing for Crims because RPK precise. On the retake, JW on the reposition. So Brolin, his objective is clear. Keep attention on him. Slow them down. Oh, this is and the backs are turned. Brolin gets the oh! Unbelievable! With the Desert Eagle! It's shocks, no less. Nai has got himself the Krieg and he's putting bullets in the right place. Oh, JW! Thought the smoke would be enough, but not when Zai Wu's in the server. Not far off. Not aware where Brolin is, but with. The grasp on the bomb. They just lie in wait, hoping Zywu would find them a way in, hoping that the absence of the other two players causes some paranoia. Now he pushes in, but Brolin holds his nerve and holds his spot, and he's not done yet. Three in the round from the young Swede, shut down eventually, but Brolin secures it for Fnatic. They are on the board in the second half. First defensive round picked up, continues his rampage. Three frags, it's all him. And now the bomb's down, the tide shifts, and Crimson Golden have got a mammoth task ahead of them. They don't have utility for this retake. Sure, they've got the kits, but no smoke, no flashes, nothing to force the fight. They know where Zywu is, that's something. The bomb's well over half gone already, though. Options. Starting to look very limited. Crims, however, onto Alex. That's the main fragger down. Oh, they are on ramp. And hang on, he can hold them. He's on the defuse. Oh, yeah. In the last second, 5.15. I can't believe it. Four in that round from Krim. Vitality have a clear game plan. It will be an A execute. Bronze already shown face towards ramp. And Zaiwu ready and willing to take that fight. 
Oh, 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 oh dear. Things are arriving. Oh, so it's oh, oh, no! With just the CZ! No! no! He's dead! Shot! Apex! They only need two more! DW, have they done enough? Shot to save Vitality! It's The boy won through waiting for his teammates to flash the support though. His backup has arrived. And a call left alone towards first. Now to clutch it in one versus one. He's found his two. He needs a 3k in this round and 30 seconds left. The bomb is on his back. Is he considering rotation? He is. He's gonna commit to this. You can see him taking a route over towards the A site, looking for the bomb plant there, and then he can force the issue by allowing S attack or making S attack push into him. It's a smart play, but S attack's gonna be there quite quickly. Lining himself up to take down Acor. He's just planted the bomb, making his way back over towards short right afterwards, and he'll be spotted on his cross. So that's S attack with the information to play with. One on one situation, Acor just rounding that corner. Hearing the bomb getting tapped, he's trying to. On a different angle to work with, but that bomb's been planted towards the pit position, so he's gonna have cover there for Essa Tag. He's open, never mind. On top of the balcony, he's expecting a call to peek back towards short, expecting him to hold face, but no. Armor, you're still looking at Trick having a, a lot of damage done to their economy and an inability to buy if they get uh, bested in the next round. You can see the long range duels are obviously favoring them by a whole lot just because they're out in the open and you're hitting non armored opponents. There you go, Hunden with that final frag. And the fact that they're still putting up a decent fight when it comes to buy rounds, it's not looking uh, spectacular. That's not a bad ace at all for Stown. It's just spamming though. I mean, look, it's an eco ace. Even that, he's just spamming through the smokes. Both frags have come through for Heroic and two orbs on a three man advantage retake. They'll find the first frag at least. Starman's got to do some absolutely major heroics to pull this one off. He'll take out Roid. Secondary frag. Are you really going to do this, Starman? I've seen some insane stuff from this kid. He's found a third kill. Deagle out to do damage to the fourth man. Surely not. He's missing the bullets. And the last man left is the core. He's got himself two. But Kadian's got a fighting chance of this one. Round the corner with the CZ. And he will just try to defuse his five seconds on the clock. I think the bomb's too far gone. And Starman's heroic efforts will go to waste on the final round as we secure 8-7 at the half to the favor. As we can see, Bobski jump peeking to try and catch an angle. Two through short. Molotov comes in. Borup's going to be ready to take a peek here any moment. Now, there's a flashbang on Stavin, but he can't really afford to deploy it as he could be pushed from long at any moment. But Borup covers the push onto site, taking down Rojay. But Bobski finds another. This is all on the Borup. He finds one, sees the other player up on top of the box. Bobski's closing in the distance. Close range fight. Borup dancing around, finds it. A second kill. A third kill, rather, for the second there in the last play, and an absolutely wonderful round. I'll ever say I don't think someone's going to do a lot. Now, the flank behind, is he going to anticipate it? No, he doesn't, so getting taken down. That's kind of what I was leaning towards from Stavin, but sadly, his whole team died in the process. So never mind. Raw Edge doing massive work for Tricked in that one, and Starvin have to fight back towards the banana position. The bomb is obviously in CT control. They'll face one by one. Triple peak. Warp with a nice lineup, though. Two kills to his name. Up for the 3k! And Roage gets three, Borup gets three, everyone gets three here in the server as Heroic do equalize for the bomb plant to be secured. He'll cut off Snappy, turn around for the second man. He's made his way deeper to the bomb site though. The nades shouldn't shut down Etta Tag. It will do a little bit of damage. But the 3v2 retake needs to still come in. Hunden trying his best. Kadian down to two points of health. Starvin on 10. This is an opportunity to work with Bobski. Caught off guard towards long. Leaves Hunden alone to clutch this. He's done something like this before. And the Molotov will run. He gets a second oh. kill. He might do it again. 2 HP for Kadian. He's got to land the headshot. Hunden has got to completely miss out the spray. And he missed the first phase. Second phase doesn't get the frag, but the third phase will finish the job. Hunden, a massive 4K to equalize on the board once again. So many people would have just lost money if you said one player is going to get a 4K clutch, a 1v3 in the end uh, to, to win the first round of this. It wouldn't be Hunden you put the money on, but it comes back to... Worse for wear for Trick. They know there's a player on long. Flash comes over. They're ready for it, though. Acor finds the kill. Scoped in on the AWP. Now down to a 2v3. Borup on the... I actually didn't even notice he's on the flank. 
This could be huge. Stavin just needs to buy time. You can see he ducks down so they won't see him. So this buys more up a little bit more time to take the fight to come up behind them. They'll suspect it eventually. He lines them up. He takes two. And the bomb diffuser. He knows it's the last. Lots of damage done to Bobski. This is for the map. This is oh for the series and the place in Star Series. Rose with Sobel here. But back the bomb site. Tank goes down. Denny Slaw. And he up his position. Try looking for the next man. Drops on the Zix. Loses a lot of HP. And in the end goes down to the MAC 10. Coming through. Goofy with a trade. But Crit and Lunatic fall back. All the same. Almost a triple kill for Raftu. And now Rainwalker is left alone. Bomb plant secured. AK up against two. will spot the first man. I think he spotted the second one as well. Does he hear Darko? Does he know where he is? The AK around the other side of the bomb train is not catching off any vision. The timing is so good for the Deagle player of the CT forces. He's hearing Rainmaker all over the place in the end. He will get the triple kill and will be able to. But it's not a good outlook for the T's. 40 seconds left on the clock. Scaler trying to move up into t -Con. In particular, Raftu and Rainwaker. Darko here on the support in place with the red train. will get one kill for his trouble, but traded back by Rainwaker at least. Buying a bit of a chance available, but still a two-man advantage. Trying to make it three on the part of the AWP. He's walking around that corner. Lunatic's ready for the trade frag from Rainwaker. All that remains. Gets two headshots. Okay, that's a nice little sequence, but three kills to his name. He's got to find the ace. Smoked out and tries to secure the bomb plant. 15 seconds to do so. One blind spray from the CT side. Could it take him out and still, instead he goes planting towards the end of the train. Hearing Crit Your Face making his way forward. The footsteps being heard. He's got the 4K. Rain Waker still with a chance available. He's looking for Goofy on the spray. Oh. Rain Waker clutching it for Skade. An ace in the round and a fourth secured by the team. That is in no way, shape, or form an easy situation. Let's see the rocking. Ooh, he spots up the guy towards connector, lands a couple shots, not the kill. Rain Waker, he's the one delivering the lethal blow. It's suddenly four kills for Rain Waker and crit. As he's making his way to the bomb set here. He's got the op, but he's also got the USB. He can get the kill on low HP. Rain Waker, oh, he gets the kill on rocking. That's nice, that's huge, that's massive. That's crit your face to secure the clutch. He's looking for the kit. Oh, nope, not gonna pick that one up. Crit <laughs> your face. Go in for the defuse and just end the round. There we go. USP 3k clutch. Nicely done from Crit Your Face as we go 9 to 5 up for the Pat side. Oh, getting headshots. That's so good right now. The one player is doing the fine job here right now. Sobel needs to follow up, and he sure does with his teammates. Rain Waker is in a fine position, however, they need to eliminate the player here as quickly as possible, or he can rain havoc. And he's oh. doing just that. Oh. He with and Rain Waker, he's of the round. Trips looking for a fast place, a fast paced play down towards B. Surreal stops that from happening. Two kills of his own with the rifle, makes it a third. Nice clean round there from Surreal. He's always solid as these sort of bomb site anchors. Could get that bomb planted safely on the other side of the site. Rojay trying to keep his teammates safe, watching Hut easily to the left side. Though aggression comes in again, it's traded out into the one versus one. Flashbang goes through. Crucial doesn't realize the man has left the site. Oh, that's massive from Bubski. He's about to go around for the flank. Crucial might figure this out, though. He's cleared the site. He's getting on the bomb, and it's planted safe. Bubski has got to get a move on here. Fake Diffuse comes through, and Bubski's taking the risk. He's closing the distance onto the site. This time, Crucial fakes it out again. Bubski makes the noise, and that means Crucial can flick it back around for the round win. Great play at the end there in the clutch, but the mind games goes and Spellan picking up the utility for X Epsilon. The European squad trying to move straight into the ramp room, but they've already lost their first player. Push coming down towards Shush, who's decided to fall back. Nice kill on towards the first player, gets the follow-up frag. Shush doing work, gets a 4K on the hold. Such a sick job. The ramp, we've seen what he can do from this position. Hunden's lining up the flashbang. Shush is about to get aggressive at just the right time. Flash is good. Great kills from Shush. Again, the flash sets him up so well. Three flashes from NK. Almost pre-fires the position. But Tricks again have brought it back to even Stevens. Two versus two. And that's an amazing shot coming in from Acor. His AWP coming into this round with a triple kill. It's all on Surreal. The spray is good onto the first man. But Roje can run right over to the A-bomb site. Surreal should figure this out eventually. 20 Ooh. seconds left, and you could start to see Surreal looking back towards the A site. Timing might be right for him. Good shot from Surreal. Roje was all.